the tree of meaning for universal understanding. These are the ten dimensions of string theory. They are the ten dimensions of reality or of our minds, of the universe, of our bodies, of everything, the ten dimensions. Now the ten dimensions are, are if you like, intuitive and they're pre-verbal. So this is the structure of our minds that then expresses itself through this structure. So this is a universal understanding because it's pre-verbal and we can use this to form a, a, a common philosophy and a common language, a common means of communication, a system of integration, of education. Now the, the ten dimensions, although they're the same as each other as dimensions, the, the ten dimensions are not the same as each other because they build one on top of the other. And it is this relationship that we all understand. Here we have the point, the point, and then the point moves to form the line. And then the line, which is the, the first dimension, then the line moves to form the surface, you know, the plane. You know, that's a, a, a face, a bust, you know, head and shoulders, the number two. And then we get an image of that on our minds of, of a cartoon, a line on a surface, dividing up separate areas. And then when we repeat those images, we then get the third, third and the fourth dimensions. And then the fifth dimension, that's the fifth dimension is an eye, the find is an eye. The fifth dimension is vision, is the observer, you know, is the driver, you know, the ego. And then we move from the uh, space, from different spaces, from this waveform, we then get pressure. And from pressure, we get fixed pressure maps which gives us objects, uh, the, you know, the solid world, the world of things. And then from, the, from these things, we then get energy. The different things have got different levels of energy. And then that level of energy puts the things in a certain position. That nine is like a G for a gravity. So these are the ten dimensions that you know, we need to understand, but we can understand that these dimensions are pre-verbal, they're intuitive. We know that, that these dimensions are there, you know, a point, a line, a plane, and then space-time, and then viewing that situation, those different images, those different cartoon images forming the space-time continuum, which then the space-time, you know, the, it gives the energy. So we, we understand, or can understand, the structure of the ten dimensions. And this structure of the ten dimensions, you know, gives rise to everything. Now, there's some terms that I might use, which might seem, you know, scientific. Other words might use, might sound like, you know, New Age or, you know, occult. What we've got to understand, there is this one system. This one system, and by going back to these dimensions, we can extract that one system and that common language, you know, from the different uh, schools of thought, the different systems of jargon. But let's, let's start off now with the tree of meaning. Of meaning. Start off with, with the, the zero on the point. Now this is called the Isakawa entoptic, or the breast entoptic, or the signal entoptic. It's a pattern in your mind of focusing in on a point 
and back out into a circle. In actual energy terms, this is a, you know, an energy, there's a coaxial energy, there's the energy flowing in at the point, right, energy flowing in at the point, and then flowing back out in the circle, flowing into the point, then back out into the circle, so the circle is actually the returning energy as we focus in and out the focus to go to the individual point but now we must start off with zero with nothing we'll start off with nothing nothing on nothing how absurd so we start with nothing now there is only one nothing there's only one nothing so the nothing is oneness. The nothing is the void. And beyond the void, there's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahman. The I Am. The All-Seeing. We start off with nothing. We start off with nothing. Now the next property of nothing after its oneness is its infinite you know nothing cannot be bounded it must be unbounded as soon as it's bounded it's something so you start off with nothing and it's infinite it's unbounded and because it's unbounded you know this is you know the nothingness is ain the, the unboundedness is ain soft the infinite, and then it, it becomes light, the Ain Sof or the infinite light. Now this is the light that we call consciousness, or mind, or the divine essence. This is the energy, the dark energy, the prana. So this is the infinite, you know, light of mind, the universal intellect. And there we have the point. The point is the point of our attention, the focus of attention. You know, how we focus our mind. Our mind is like a lens. This is a lens and we focus onto a point. So in this, there's all the points. This is Kether, the white head, the brain, the white head, the, the, the light. brain, all the points in the brain, all of these points are, are super pixels in a screen in our minds, a screen, super pixels, and, and so all, all the multiverses are actually projections of the same set of super pixels, the super pixels are this structure, we give this structure. This structure applies to the smallest and the largest, to the super pixel, to our minds, to our bodies, and to the universe, to the gods, and to all our aspects and elements of nature. So, th so this is the breast end optic. So when the child is born and opens its eyes, it sees the breast. It looks for the breast, that circle and point. The, the point is the source, the source of the milk or the source of the energy. It's love, the source of the milk, me lick, me like, or love. This, so zero is love, like the same tennis. Zero is love. When we do something for love, we do it for nothing. Then we've got the point moving. We then see the point moving. And this is then a function of pi. Because as we're moving in and out of focus, we get that circle. So this is a function of pi. Remember, this is pi in imagination. 
So this is the moving in a line. So first of all, this is seeing objects moving. And then it's being able to see what the course, of, you know, the, the course of that movement will be. The course of events. This is the, what I mean by the tree of meaning. Now it grows from these relationships between the dimensions. So you get the point moving. So this becomes inertia, the resistance to movement. And then the other one it becomes momentum. Going back, so it is the, the inertia, overcoming inertia, overcoming inertia, having a purpose and intent, you know, to move on that course of action, and for that course of action to accord with the rules of conduct, so you stay within the line. <coughs> and you see you, your consequences of your action. So there is following guidance, and there is love, and there we see the, the movement, the consequences of action, which gives the idea of wisdom, you know, the knowledge of the consequences of action and movement. If you jump off the cliff, you're going to smash at the bottom. So this is wisdom. So there we have love going to wisdom. Philosophy philosophy. So there we have a function, a path to basically philosophy, following a course of action, being able to overcome inertia. So this is what I mean by the tree of meaning, from the relationships between the dimensions and our understanding, our intuitive understanding. So these grow into a metaphor that develops into a meaning, and this is how the tree of meaning grows. So these are, this originally as well, you know, this tribe was centered around the, the holy mountain, which was a breast-shaped hill. The Romans used to call England the place of the breast-shaped hills. Cambrai, Cambra, see, common language, meaning breast-shaped hills, Cambrai. Canberra, the Breast-shaped Hill, and the Breast-shaped Hill is the source of the, now the, the mean, original word for hill was law, so we get the law, and, and the, the idea of law that from the source comes the law, and it says that without beginning, without beginning, the law creates thought and living substance. Thought and the law creates thought and living substance. Thought is what comes from seeing the consequences of action and being able to see, see if you like, the future, you know, the, the, the consequences. As that image appears, appears we create the, the, the surface, that two dimensional image that we actually see in. You know, two-dimensional image, remember. Because this is the level of the video signal of quantum mechanics. The level of angels, of beings of light. These are all the same. Quantum events, quantum reality. So this, the face, is E, the exponential, you know, entropy, the decay of the image, always decaying back into the background, merging into the background. See, if you like, the energy is flowing in through the point, which is the movement, and then it's flowing back, the returning energy back to the source. So here from the one we get the idea of an example, an example to follow, 
the one to follow, you know, the, the pioneer. From the reverse movement, you get the idea of a clown, you know, the Pied Piper, someone who's misleading. So there we have a philosopher, there we have someone who's misleading, misleading. But he's also teaching through humour. So, in this triangle, you see, this is the video signal. We have the differentiation of the video signal into the different areas. So that is like it. The door is open, that is a door that's closed. You know, closed area or an open area. When we've got an open area, it's peace and expansion. When there's a closed area, it's stagnation and we're blocked. So there's, you know, energy balances up and down these lines and in and out the spheres, the circles. So there we have a differentiation which is the speed that that separate area is moving and it's that relative acceleration to the, the observer. Remember the observer is in the relativity triangle. He's bound by relativity in space-time and the energy, how much energy you've got, how old you are, and, and what, what space you've got.